Yes Mikhail Masa Teachings Studies Bakongo, Religion and Magic, Men and the Spirit, Men The Body The Soul The Sensitive Soul The Name Spirits Ancestors Matibo Nkita By Simbi Other Spirits Men Man and his social environment provide the Bakongo with the constituent elements of what we call the world of spirits. These spirits would only be men like them, but different in body and placed in other spheres. To understand this world of spirits, one must first assimilate the indigenous conception of the world of men. For the Bakongo, man is composed of four elements, the body, Nitu, the blood, Menga, which contains the soul, Moyo, and the Mfuenuta, a kind of double soul. Giving the human being his perfect personality, the name, Zina, constitutes the complete man. The body. The word Nitu exclusively means the human body, animals do not have it according to the indigenous conception. Those that are edible, like humans, have flesh, baisi, bones, menga, blood, and even bundu, a heart, but they have a stomach or lukutu, while a human must content themselves with entrails or ndaya. Now, the forms we call spirits, according to the Bakongo, possess a body or nitu. When a man leaves his mortal envelope, he immediately assumes another nitu or body. Note in this regard some frequent proverbs, Beto Bantu Niti Imbundu, we, human beings, are made of a body and a heart, Beto Bantu Niti Imoyo, we are composed of body and soul. This means, we humans cannot change what we are, we must take ourselves as we were created. The soul. The blood, spread throughout the body, is the seed of the soul or moyo. Any loss of blood makes the soul suffer, to the point where it eventually abandons the bloodless corpse. This conception explains the role of blood in indigenous fetishism. If someone manages to appropriate blood, they thereby become the master of the occult forces imprisoned within it. Hence another customary point, the slightest bleeding wound, even just a few drops, is more serious and requires a more severe punishment than the most violent blow not followed by bloodshed. The principal seat of the soul is the heart, the vital center of all blood. The heart, bundu, is located near the liver, kamoya, and these two organs, along with the blood, are the sources of life, hence their primordial role in magic. In the past, quite often, when poor prisoners of war were not ransomed, they were vivisected to be eaten. Even today, the heart and liver of animals killed in hunting rightfully belong to the chief. The soul is the principle of life, the motivating principle. The verb, to live, can be translated in three different ways, Zinya used only for humans and meaning strictly to continue living, Moyo used indiscriminately for all living beings, and finally, Kalabuna literally, to be thus, used to designate animated beings or souls. Although the Mukongo makes a very clear distinction between the organ that dies and the immortal soul, the word, Bundu or Ntaima, indifferently means, soul, or, heart. The following proverb is an example, Asai Kafwa, Mu Diambu Vibundu Muntu Idila Kula, he is going to die, for the heart of man finds its peace only far away, that is, not on this earth but beyond the grave. The Bakongo, want through the heart, think in the heart. It has remained in the depths of my heart, means, I have forgotten it. They, drop their heart, meaning they regain their calm. As in our European languages, proverbs retain their full meaning, whether referring to the organ itself or to the faculty. The functions of the brain are unknown to them. The heart alone is the seat and organ of ideas, will, memory, imagination, all movements of the heart, all manifestations of the soul. Certain expressions suggest that the heart is also the principle of moral good and evil. He didn't want it in his heart, and he wanted it in his heart, respectively mean, this act is not deliberate, he did it without bad intention, and, he did it with premeditation, so he is guilty. However, the phrase, it was the will of my heart, is sometimes used to mean something else entirely, 
namely, I was carried away by passion. This latter expression naturally stems from the indigenous conception of things. Each being, indeed, has its substance, its nature, a source of known or occult forces, favorable or hostile. The nature of an object depends on the external form that characterizes it. It is the form that primarily and above all designates the names of concrete substances. Any change in form or external appearance corresponds to a modification of internal forces, a new thing replacing the old, the name must necessarily change. Does a substance retain its ordinary form, one will say of it Kikala Buna, it is thus. If it is transformed, FWA or Fwiti, it is no longer the same. FWA is ordinarily translated as dying. This interpretation applies only to living beings. To the question, is your father still alive, the Mukongo will reply, you call a Buna, he is thus, meaning he is still alive, or, Fwiti, he is dead. If it concerns inanimate objects, such as clothes, the same terms Kikongo will be used for the answer, they will then mean, they are still in good condition, or, they are worn out. The uprooted tree lying across the path makes it fwiti. If the roof of the hut succumbs to the elements, the hut is fwiti. This should not mislead anyone, in no way do blacks imagine that these objects are alive or only endowed with a spirit like humans, but the path, the hut, in the cases cited, have lost their characteristic form and no longer correspond to the idea that the Mukongo has of them. Every manner of being corresponds to special properties. The manner of being of stones and minerals Kalabuna will be different from that of plants, which grow, Mina, yet another is that of animals, Omoya, another that of man, Omoya and Uzina. It is thanks to the soul, Moyo, that man lives his life, Uzina. This soul victoriously resists death, and religion and magic withdraws to Ku and Asa, to the water, which the Bakongo designate in a very characteristic way, Ku Bazangila, that is to say, where one lives. There it assumes another body, Nitu, which is no longer black, but white. All beings endowed with a special power, vital or otherwise, continue to possess it as long as they retain the form, the seed of this power. Thus the beaks of birds of prey and the claws of leopards enclosed in Nkisi are not only symbols but also true sources of Nkisi's power. When the form is entirely destroyed, then only life or power no longer exists. It is in this Bakongo conception that one must find the reason for their fear of touching the corpse of a malevolent animal, and their reluctance to eat raw vegetables or meat. The Sensitive Soul Mfumu Kutu is the principle of sensitive perception. It is called the Lord of the Ear because it is supposed to reside there, hence earwax will be the Tufi Tumfum Fumu Kutu, the eliminations of Mfumu Kutu. Like other mysterious beings, Mfumu Kutu is a thing of Nzambi, Kima Ki Nzambi. When it enters the infant, it comes from afar, when it leaves the corpse, it goes far away, Ku Katalukati, what it did before living in man, what it will do afterwards, no one knows. When it is at home, that is, in the ear, it activates hearing and sight, in its absence, these senses are inoperative. At night, it wanders through the countryside, hence sleep overtakes man, during the day, if it leaves, man falls unconscious. To faint, to fall into a swoon, is to die by separation, from Gambu, Mfumu Kudu has separated from the body. If in the morning one has some difficulty in waking someone up, it is because their Mfumu Kudu has not returned, it has gone too far. Lika Kilu or to sleep, Lekandosi or to Dream, are equally mysterious things, they are somewhat explained by the intervention of Mfumu Kutu. When Mfumu Kutu has left, its activity does not diminish, but it is different, it wanders everywhere, it encounters what one encounters in the dark night, ghosts and sorcerers against which it must fight, it does what one does at night, thefts, marital relations, etc. All of this, the sleeping man sometimes realizes, it is the dream. These explanations were provided to me with the cited examples by old indigenous chiefs. They also assured me that Mfumu Kudu was the origin of the shadow that follows man everywhere. The Bambata, 
on the contrary, attribute the shadow to the soul proper, moyo, or still consider it as a kind of double of this soul, kini or kavivi. Since the shadow is so intimately linked to the soul or tumfuma kutu, the old indigenous people do not tolerate it being trampled underfoot, mfumu kutu would be offended, they would contract an illness. The Bakongo, it seems, do not have a well-defined idea about the shadow. Trying to scrutinize their thought, I objected that trees, huts, animals also having a shadow should, like humans, have a mfumu kutu. Undoubtedly, they replied, animals have their shadow like us, but trees and huts do not have a shadow or kini, they only have kiosi, literally a freshness, they cannot have mfumu kutu. So do animals also have mfumu kutu, I continued, since they have a shadow? In no way, they do not have mfumu kutu, because their shadow, kini, is different from that of humans. How does it differ then? Our elders did not tell us that. The final answer of the cornered Mukongo. Subscribe for part 2. Mikhail Masa teaches.